In this series, I'll be discussing getting the most out of the ANSYS circuit simulator included with the electronics desktop that allows you to pull in data from HFSS, Q3D, SI Wave, or even external S parameter files. To start, we'll look at exporting an S parameter file from HFSS and bringing that in the circuit tool to do further analysis. So to begin, let's take this HFSS project, which is just the view wizard example, and export the S parameter file for this. So we'd go to the solution setup, right click, and choose matrix data. And in this tab, you'll see an export tab. And here, we'll choose export matrix data. Now we'll save it exactly in this directory. And here you'll notice that there is a prompt to um, change the impedance renormalization. I'll have another tips and tricks video to talk about that a little further, but for now we'll just leave that as default and hit OK. And now let's say we wanted to do some analysis on this S parameter model, or perhaps add um, additional components like resistors, capacitors, inductors, or um, plenty of other components. What we'll do is we'll add a circuit design to this project by using project, insert circuit design, now this prompt here definitely applies to some of the other tools that the circuit simulator can do for the purposes of this tips and tricks video and what we'll be doing, it will suffice to just choose none and hit okay. And now with the circuit design added, what we can do is go to the symbols tab of the component libraries. And if this window is not visible, you can find that in view and make sure that component libraries is checked. And the model we're looking for to pull in external S parameter data is n port. So when we click that, we select the touchstone file. It could be any number of ports. And we get a device with the number of pins that we expect. Now these pin names are based in HFSS on the terminals in our two wave ports. If this were perhaps an external S parameter file from like a vector network analyzer, you might just see this listed as port one, port two, port three, port four. Uh, totally depends on exactly how the S parameter file is formatted. Now, for now, what we have to do to um, actually get measurements out of this is to add interface ports to each of these exposed pins. So if you think of this as your DUT, uh, the tool that we're going to be talking about today, the linear network analysis, is basically uh, analogous to what a vector network analyzer or VNA would be doing. So we have to attach our equivalent VNA ports to each of our exposed pins, which we do with this interface port tool, which we can access via this shortcut in the schematic tab of the ribbon, or we can choose a draw interface port. Now I'll be doing a lot of this in this series, but before I place a component, if I hit the R key on my keyboard, it will actually rotate. So what I wanna do is just rotate these interface ports that are in line with the exposed pins and place four of those. Now to connect them, I'll just drag them and attach them to each of those pins there. Now, anytime you have a device that you place, if you just click it in the properties window, you'll see a number of properties, or I could just double click and I'll get a separate window. And here, the um, first, and first and foremost property that you'll see with an interface port is the impedance. So again, this will be covered in another tips and tricks video, exactly how relevant it is. But just imagine if this was a vector network analyzer, um, the data it would report was probably for a 50 ohm um, launch, and we'll just leave it at 50 ohms for default by now. So having left that at 50 ohms, we're actually good to go on the schematic. All we need to do is add a frequency sweep. So if we right click analysis, the solver we're going to be using to do this um, linear frequency sweep would be linear network analysis. So when we do that, we'll click add here to add the frequency sweep. And you'll actually see that I've already added it in previously. Uh, right now it's a linear uh, zero to 4.38 gigahertz with a 50 megahertz step. So I'll just re-enter that just to make it a little easier. So let's delete that and call this zero to 4.38 gigahertz. We'll change this to linear step and make sure that's 50 megahertz. Then we click add and hit OK. Now a note on that, this frequency sweep happens to match what I did in HFSS. So if we click on our frequency sweep, the S parameter data is valid for these frequencies listed in the sweep, basically these 88 points. Now if I wanted to make a finer sweep in the circuit simulator, like say do instead of 88 points, do like 160 points and do maybe 25 megahertz steps, 
you can do that. The circuit simulator will actually interpolate data. It just becomes a little dicey if, say, I wanted to sweep outside of this range, in which case the circuit simulator would be forced to extrapolate by a number of different means. But that's, again, a whole other video. So with that done, what we're going to do is analyze this. And once complete, we'll be able to start looking at S parameter data for this particular model. So let's go into our results and create a standard report. And from here, you probably, if you're familiar with the ANSYS tools, this is exactly the same reporter that you're used to. So you'll notice, of course, first and foremost, that the quantities for our S parameters are based entirely on the interface ports and have nothing to do with the actual pin names. So if you ever wanted to rename these ports and get different quantities appearing in this window, you can. Now, uh, another thing to note is that you'll notice that all of my S parameter data right now is single-ended, and that's by default. So um, let's just for now look at a single-ended insertion loss. So maybe look at port 1 to port 3. So what I'll do is I will just enter that quantity, and if I wanted to, I could type this in here. For example, I could modify this so that it's port 1 to 2, but we'll just look at insertion loss for right now and click a new report. We'll see here some single-ended insertion loss, perhaps not the most ideal. And the reason is that the HFSS model for careful observers uh, was actually a differential pair. So if I wanted to get differential S parameter data, what we can do is delete that. And now we will go to circuit at the top menu and choose differential pairs. And here we could actually uh, designate our differential pairs based on our interface ports. So port 1 and 2 are one differential pair, so we'll add that. And port 3 and port 4 are the other differential pair. Now we have these additional quantities that we can plot with, notably the differential and common mode portions of each of these differential pairs. And the one thing that we have to be careful to specify here is the reference impedance, both differential and common mode. So just make sure that these reference, impedance, reference impedances match what you're expecting for your particular measurement standard. So we hit OK, and now what we'll do is we'll create a report. And under this show category, we now have both terminals and differential pairs. If we choose differential pairs, we'll now be able to see those quantities that I just mentioned. And what we're interested in looking at just for this example is di uh, differential insertion loss. So here we'll choose differential 2 to differential 1, hit new report. And now here we have a much cleaner looking differential insertion loss for this particular pair. If I wanted to, I could look at um, mixed mode S parameters, such as mode conversion, common mode rejection, uh, of course, differential return loss, basically anything in that combination. So now let's say that um, you instead wanted to bring in, instead of just one uh, S parameter model, you had a perhaps a class of S parameter models like Say in a manufacturing line, you've measured a number of devices that are identical, but of course will perhaps have some kind of manufacturing tolerance that changes the data. And you want to look at uh, hundreds of S parameter files instead of just one. Instead of using the endport model, you will use endport multi. And basically this will allow us to add a number of files to this block. And we'll be able to look at all of this S parameter data for a class of different S parameter files rather than having to add in uh, 100 of these blocks and adding in four sets of uh, interface ports for each one of those. So this mostly summarizes exactly how to do a linear network analysis and analyze S parameters. If I wanted to, there's nothing to stop me from bringing in additional S parameter files and cascading them to the end of this channel, which is something we'll commonly do for larger and more complex simulations. Future videos in this series will include integrating circuit elements into your models, um, exploring some of the additional components in the component libraries, using things like antenna matching networks, dynamically linking the circuit to some of your HFSS, Q3D, or SI wave analyses, um, running eye diagram analysis or other channel analysis tools, looking at IBIS models, and plenty of other applications as the circuit simulator is quite diverse and what it can do. So definitely stay tuned for those series.